Hello and welcome! Some time ago I made a video about the desoldering station ZD915. After some longer term usage, I want to give an update and maybe some advices I found helpful. But first I want to show you one practical example of using the desoldering station, without which such an operation would not be possible, I think. At least it would take ages to do it. I got this not working slot 1 mainboard. It didn't even power up due to some shorts somewhere in it. After a lengthy investigation, I found a broken and bent pin inside of the AGP slot. It took me really a lot of time to find it, and there was no way to bend it back using tweezers or something, believe me, I tried. So I decided to replace the whole AGP slot. I never tried to desolder a part with so many pins before, and I thought that it would be a nice ultimate test for my desoldering station. I just added some flux and didn't even have to add fresh solder. The ZD915 just managed to get everything free in a couple of minutes. Important is not to rush, but give it the needed time to heat every pin through and maybe wiggle a little bit. After I desoldered all the pins, the AGP slot came easily out of the mainboard. I still had to wiggle it a little bit, hence there were just too many pins to just fall out. After getting the slot from the board, I realized that there were even more pins bent and broken, so there was no way to reuse that port anyway. In the end, I just had to clean up the holes with more flux and solder wick to prepare the spot for a new port. I have many old mainboards here I am using to get parts from. Most of them are somehow physically damaged and not repairable anyway. Well, everything is repairable in theory. You know what I mean. However, I could salvage another AGP slot desoldering it from this damaged mainboard in only a couple of minutes. Back to our patient, I inserted the new old AGP slot into the mainboard and soldered two outer pins first to be sure that the slot is sitting upright. It is important to have it really straight because even a tiny angle of some degrees would result in a slopped graphic card, making it impossible to install it in a case. After checking that everything is sitting right, I soldered all the other pins. Unfortunately, I somehow forgot to film how I soldered the pins, sorry for that. Anyway, after soldering, please never forget to clean everything with IPA, isopropanol. Since flux is conductive and can damage your hardware when you power it up for testing. So, here is the old AGP slot and the new one installed into the mainboard. Pay attention to the orientation of the key when replacing such a slot. It differs between AGP 1 and 2, giving 1.5 or 3.3 volts, so if you mess it up, you'll probably fry your graphics card. Anyway, we are done and ready for testing. I will power up the mainboard first to see that we have no short and it is working somehow. It seems to be ok, the pause signal means that no graphics adapter was installed. Now let's try to install this PCI VGA adapter first and see if we get any video signal. Well that looks good, the mainboard seems to work so far as expected and we have a video signal using PCI video card. And now most interesting part, I will replace the PCI video card by an AGP one. And again, we have no post errors and clean video signal. This means our AGP slot is working well. I put it into DOS and got some benchmarks running. I see no issues so far, but I will have to do more tests in Windows with proper Direct3D and full GPU stack. However, this is out of scope of this video. And for now, I call the AGP transplantation a success. Instead, I would like to come back to the main topic of this video, the desoldering station. In short, I'm really a fan of this device. Without it, I wouldn't even think about such a complicated thing like an AGP transplantation. 
With it, the whole operation, including desoldering of two AGP slots and soldering one back again, took me around 30 minutes. I think this is incredible and it makes so much fun as popping a bubble wrap. Believe me or not, but since I have this desoldering station, I almost searching for something else I could desolder. Now let's talk about some problems I have. First negative notice is that the whole setup is a bit clunky. It takes a lot of space on my table and I have always to pack it into a box when I'm not using it. Well, it is as it is and we can't really change it. Second, you have to clean the gun really often. If you don't, the efficiency of the desoldering station drops hard and you can't work with it at all. All solder and flux residue accumulates very fast in the small glass tube and must be removed regularly. Fortunately, it is very easy to clean the tube and it can be done with piece of paper towel in a minute. To extend the duty time of the gun without the need to clean it, you can put a piece of solder wick inside the tube. It will attract the particles and the gun will remain clean a little bit longer. However, this helps only by a small margin. The next point is that the felt filter suck the flux and after a while no air can pass anymore. You have to replace the filters regularly. There are two filters used. One in the handgun and one in the desoldering station itself. The manufacturer supplied only two sets of filters and they get dirty quite fast. Unfortunately, the filters are really expensive. They cost between 7 and 10 euro per set. And I absolutely can understand why. However, as I ran out of stock, I had to improvise and rolled a filter out of paper towel for the handgun. This did the trick for me, however, don't make it too tight or the gun will not be able to pull any air. After a while, I stumbled over such a set of self-sticking felt feet for furniture and such things. I realized that the material is quite the same as the one used for original filters. All I had to do is to pull the sticky film from the back of these things and I got a perfect material for the filters. The sizes didn't quite match for me, so I had to cut them into shape with a pair of scissors. However, this is worth it, since this whole pack costs only one euro. What else? Well, the nozzle clogged quite a lot. Unfortunately, I didn't find a way to prevent it from clogging. There are needles supplied with the handgun and you will really use them a lot. Keeping all these tricks in mind and cleaning the desoldering station regularly will put a very nice tool in your hand. Since I bought it, I got a lot of questions if I am still happy with it. And I have to admit, yes, absolutely yes. This is one of my most important tools when tinkering with the old hardware. I am using it often and don't want to miss it in, on my workbench. I hope you like this update overview. Please write your comments down below. So far, thank you very much, happy new year from me and see you next time.